Um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Silvia Cadena. I am the acting CEO of the APNIC Foundation. Um, APNIC is really proud, and, and the foundation is really proud to host this event again uh, after COVID and a few ones that we missed. Uh, but before COVID, we used to try and do this, this um, Suarez with organizations that were investing in internet development to try and find some common ground uh, and try to get to know each other, what our priorities are and how can we um, find ways to collaborate or at least don't feel that alone in the field when we are um, supporting our communities. So we are um, very happy to host you uh, today. It is going to be a, a very informal conversation where we hope that organizations that are across the room, that are some that we know and someone that, that we, don't, we don't know, uh, will take the microphone and share about the projects that they are investing in. Uh, for those of you that are receiving funding from others, I would appreciate if you let the people that are investing uh, to talk first and we will see how uh, we can talk about the ones that are receiving funds um, at, a, at a different uh, time, I would say. I am very, also very happy to have with me Valerie Friesen here, um, who has been also spearheading a similar um, approach to those that are being, have been investing in, um, um, you know, from the domain name industry, uh, also foundations and organizations that are allocating funds to support internet development. So there are a number of different organizations and initiatives. So um, for us at the foundation, we are always looking at opportunities to co-fund and collaborate and uh, make the footprint of what we're doing bigger. Um, and um, although in some areas, some of you have geographical limits about where your funds can go. It, same for us, we only cover Asia, in Asia Pacific 56 economies. Um, there are opportunities where we can cross uh, you know, borders and collaborate. So I will pass the mic to Valerie to introduce herself a little bit and then we will do a round uh, the table introduction, a very short, um, just focusing on uh, who are you, uh, your priorities, and um, you know the organization that you represent, and then we will continue with the session. Thank you, Valerie. No yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, well, very happy to be here. Uh, thank you, uh, Sylvia, for organizing this. I'm um, uh, working in the Netherlands as a director of SIDN Fund, and SIDN is the, the Dutch National Registry which uh, uh, founded a separate uh, uh, foundation to fund uh, um, um, all kinds of initiatives and organizations that try to work uh, on uh, developing a responsible internet, as we call it. So we uh, are funding um, particularly uh, projects that are um, uh, sort of empowering end users uh, in terms of educating them to use and to know everything that is necessary about responsible use of the internet and awareness building kind of uh, projects. We also cooperate a lot with other uh, funders in the Netherlands and actually also with uh, international organizations. Actually at the moment there's a uh, large uh, conference in, the, um, in Brussels that is bringing together all the digital right funders from Europe and from outside of Europe where my colleague is participating now. Um, and um, uh, I think there are many of the registries, the domain name registries that also have public interest programs or community building programs or separate funds that are working in a similar way as we are and this would be really interesting to, uh, to cooperate. Uh. Thank you, Valerie. Uh, Valerie is uh, also hosting a similar event at the ICANN meeting in Hamburg and a few what in a week yeah, very time. informal who's yes. there just uh, uh, <laughs> meet me after the meeting and we can see whether we can meet in at the ICANN. yeah so we yeah. are trying to trying to figure out a more uh, regular calendar so that we can have a chat and, and see what our priorities are um, on that note I'm going to just uh, mention very briefly what the APNIC Foundation also invests on 
So we are the fundraising arm of APNIC. APNIC allocates IP addresses and ISN numbers across 56 economies in the Asia-Pacific. And we have uh, established a foundation in 2016 uh, to support um, increased investment in the development priorities of APNIC to keep the internet open, stable, reliable, and secure in the region, but also to make it affordable and accessible. So the foundation is a fundraising uh, foundation, and we uh, are very lucky to have the support from the Asia Pacific Internet Development Trust at the moment. And we have one of the trustees here with us that will address us uh, in a minute. Um, and um, I think um, the, the kind of work that we are doing is to support programs across inclusion, infrastructure, and knowledge. We have grants, fellowships, awards, research support, um, and we implement also projects directly um, across education, uh, gender and diversity, and community building and community strengthening. So it's a, it's a kind of like a large uh, portfolio that we are um, doing, and we're trying to collaborate more especially with the foundations and organizations that are investing in technical infrastructure and technical community, as that part of the investment is very um, ignored, let's say, by the normal uh, donors, as they tend to focus more on end users and uh, digital literacy, safety, things like that. So getting support for network engineers and cybersecurity professionals is quite hard. So um, with that, I will pass on to my colleague, uh, Elisha here, who is the, the grants management lead of our main uh, mechanism for funding to the community. And then we can get the rowing mic to start probably from Paul, all the, this way, and we'll see how it goes. Okay. Just name and <laughs> Yes. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Alicia Hetner. I'm the grants management lead. Um, I, my portfolio that I look after under the APNIC Foundation is the ISIF Asia grants, um, which is um, a competitive process called for proposals uh, once a year that we uh, look to fund uh, in, in, in infrastructure, inclusion and knowledge. And we also have some subsets, which is IPv6, which is important to us, and also the environment with our and Peter Grant. Thanks. Oh. Oh, thanks, Sylvia. Hi, everyone. I'm Paul Wilson. I'm the head of, of APNIC, um, which I think Sylvia has already described very well. Um, we also are trustees in, in an internet development trust, which is funding projects uh, of the APNIC Foundation and, and also some um, an academic networking uh, back, backbone in the Pacific that's called Arena Pack and it's establishing high bandwidth connections to create a, a research and academic, research and uh, education network backbone around the uh, Pacific at the moment. Thanks. Hey everyone, uh, my name is Brian Horlick cruz uh, I'm a grants manager at the Internet Society Foundation. Um, we run a whole uh, big uh, set of different uh, grant programs funding uh, many different uh, kinds of initiatives. Um, I work on a portfolio that uh, mainly consists of sort of a community-oriented grant funding programs. Um, so running a program for uh, chapters of the Internet Society or running a program for the uh, NRIs, so national and regional uh, internet governance forums, uh, as well as a whole variety of different um, technical communities, including things like network operator groups, um, uh, national research and education networks, uh, things of that sort. Um, and I'll pass it on to our program officer, Jen Beard. Thanks. My name is Jen Beard. I'm also at the ISAC Foundation, um, working on the things that Brian described, but also our full portfolio um, deals with building a stronger internet, growing the internet, and defending the internet. So all of those different things, we run about 15 grant programs that are that range from uh, connectivity all the way to digital skills, digital learning. Um, and yeah, it's great to be here with you all. Hello, I'm Chad Garcia Ramilo. I'm from the Association for Progressive um, Communications. We're a membership network, um, and we are in about 40 countries with our members. The grants, we're not a grantee, we're not a donor, <laughs> we're not a funding organization, but we do um, share resources, and the way we do this is through in many different ways. So we do regrant, and the regranting really goes to the priorities of the, of the network. So one of them, it ranges from r human rights related um, to 
uh, connectivity, community centered connectivity, and Carlos and, uh, can speak more about that, and also Eric. One of the things for, uh, we do different things. It can be about capacity building, it can be about research, and it um, much of it, about half of it, I'd say maybe, would go to our members, but but uh, the fifty percent then goes to different partners. And sometimes it's through open calls, sometimes it's through really working with a group of members or partners to collaborate on um, sharing the resources. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Alessia Zucchetti. I am the coordinator of research and cooperation at LACNIC, which is the Latin American and the Caribbean registry. And uh, well, uh, in the case of LACNIC, we also have, uh, well, the main grant is called FRIDA. It's the Fund for um, Innovation, Digital Innovation in Latin America and the Caribbean, which has existed since, uh, well, for the past almost 20 years. So as, uh, as long as LACNIC almost. And uh, apart from that, uh, we also um, well, are focused in applied research, mainly in technical topics related with uh, network architecture, uh, internet stability, security, among other fields. And we also have uh, well, different uh, programs that um, are, f are focused mainly in uh, capacity building in uh, favoring the participation of uh, women in the technical community and the internet ecosystem at large as well in, in the region. And uh, well, I'm very glad to be here with, with all of you. Thank you. My name is Chang Ho Kim. I work for Open Society Foundation, the East Asia program. Yeah, we provide support for the main for the civil society organization. I'm only covering the Northeast Asia side, meaning China, Hong Kong, Taiwan, South Korea, and Japan. Thank you. Hello, everybody. I am I'm Percival Hicks uh, from Brazil. Uh, I'm board member at the uh, Internet Committee and uh, nick.pr. Thank you. Hello, my name is Laura Tresca. I'm also a board member of the Brazilian Steering, International Steering Committee. And the Brazilian uh, uh, Internet Steering Committee um, funds um, some AI centers in Brazil, and uh, um, we have some small fellowships for women to write papers, and also we support small events on uh, internet governance. Hi, my name is uh, Michel Lambert. I'm working with a, an organization called Equality based in Canada. We are a creating actually uh, tools and services, open source uh, tools and services to support freedom online. We have started in the last two years to support a smaller organization, smaller business, even individual developers, creating new technology to counter the splinter nets. Uh, so all kinds of new could be VPNs or satellite technology, whatever, just to uh, make sure that, we, that people can access to content when the, there are some uh, issues at that level. Can we continue with the gentleman over there? Thank you so much for doing the, the rowing microphones yourselves. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Charles Noir, and I come from, I'm the Vice President of Community Investment Policy and Advocacy at CIRA, which is the Canadian Internet Registration Authority, uh, .ca. We operate the .ca CCTLD. Um, Part of, uh, of what we do is uh, we have a granting program, amongst other ways we give back. Uh, we're focused on nonprofits, registered charities, ac academics, universities, colleges, um, and indigenous communities, with a particular focus on nor northern remote and indigenous uh, as of late. And so um, that's part of what we do. We also invest in free. Um, or producing free services, uh, for example, cybersecurity services that Canadians can use um, in order to help protect themselves online. Uh, we also provide and build um, some services so they can test their online internet 
uh, performance in a way that is uh, third party and neutral uh, so they can hold tokels to account um, for the speeds they're getting. Uh, but that's about that. Hello, my name is Jan Hilbrunen. Uh, I'm representing the Finnish Ministry for Foreign Affairs. Um, I took the seat on the table as uh, all the others also. Um, certainly our focus here is on IGF and, and funding the IGF. Uh, ever since 2006 we've been funding uh, IGF. Uh, altogether you had some two million euros, US dollars actually, as they count it. Um, so our focus has been uh, in the mandate of, uh, of the IGF uh, that has been given by, by the UN resolution uh, to, to um, do it in the, in the very beginning. Uh, certainly we are open uh, for suggestions also uh, beyond uh, IGF. Uh, what I've been uh, hearing, uh, what sort of discussions we've been having uh, during, uh, during this time uh, here in, in Kyoto, uh, I'm a bit concerned, I must admit, uh, regarding the, the financing of the IGF. Uh, I hope that uh, all the uh, participants in these discussions take this concern uh, seriously. Uh, I think it's uh, about time for us all to step up our efforts in this regard and ensure that uh, the IGF has enough resources uh, to um, fulfill its mandate. Thanks. Hi, Jean-François from the AO Foundation. I sat on the table thinking that it was for participants and all of a sudden I'm just surrounded by people who give money. <laughs> and I cannot give money, I'm sorry. Um, so our organization works uh, on data-centric digital rights and part of the project we've been involved has been uh, formulating this uh, um, data-centric digital rights framework and as well as other projects to support the technical community in what we regard as their role as next generation of rights defenders. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, here with Eric Huerta from Rhizomatica. My name is Carlos Rey Moreno from APC and together we coordinate the LogNet initiative and uh, we do a lot of uh, regranting, as Chad was mentioning before, in particular in relation to community center connectivity initiatives and creating an enabling environment that goes from strengthening organizations that are involved in the topic, uh, building their capacity through national schools of community networks, and uh, supporting uh, policy and regulatory analysis or research on the topic to organizations at the national level, uh, technology development as well as creating uh, sk uh, skills or building skills and creating safe spaces for women to upskill their knowledge in, in, in technology as well as in regulation that has to do with the internet. Thank you. Well, I pass it. <laughs> so, good afternoon, everybody. I'm Hirochika Asai from White Project. Uh, everyone calls me Panda uh, because it's easier to uh, pronounce. So. Yeah, so yeah, I'm from White Project. White Project is there, uh, was founded uh, 37 uh, years ago, so by J uh, Professor Jim Rai. So the, the White Project is kind of research consortium uh, among the uh, research, uh, I mean the industry and the academia. So the, we are more focusing on the uh, research and educational activities. So the, we are now operating the Arena Pack uh, that is mentioned uh, by the Paul. Uh, that is their uh, high capacity uh, submarine cable infrastructure for the research and education. So the, the um, I think the, the research and the education is more important, I mean, they are becoming more important for the future global, um, how, how do you say, acceleration for the uh, human activities, including the, uh, the scientific research. So the, uh, the I, I wanna um, contribute to that activity. So thank you very much, nice to meet you. Hello everyone, I'm Yoshiki Uchida. Um, people say, call me the Uchiyoshi, so please call me Uchiyoshi. So I'm now, now I'm studying the internet at the Keio University and the Wild Project. So the so I'm interested in the Epic Foundation. So I want to support the Epic Foundation in the near future. Thank you. <laughs> Hi. 
Hello, I, we're in the back row. I wasn't expecting to, <laughs> to say anything. Um, my name is Gonalaya Sprink. I'm a chair of the um, Internet Society Accessibility Standing Group. And I'm, uh, I'm a partner with a Dynamic Coalition on Accessibility and Disability. And uh, DCAD, as it's called, has received funding um, through Vinsurf um, uh, to uh, um, have travel support for persons with disability to be able to participate at the IGF and, um, and I'm playing a mentoring role in doing that because we feel that there needs to be more of a um, disability voice um, at the IGF. Thank you. Uh, hello everybody, uh, my name is Amjad. Um, uh, I work for NGO in North Africa. We are focusing ma mainly on uh, uh, digital rights and policies. Uh, I'm based in Tripoli, Libya, but we are working in the whole region, um, advocating uh, on digital rights uh, issues and uh, trying to support activists on the ground and also working on the policy level. Thank you. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. I am Glindel Montarde. I'm from Civisnet Foundation. Um, Civisnet is an NGO. Um, it focuses on serving the government through uh, providing digital transformation um, through uh, software and system development using open source systems or open source softwares. However, um, uh, we want to serve our country through our social corporate responsibility and we're looking for funds so that we could also empower the underserved and unconnected islands in the Philippines, knowing that we have seven, more than 7,000 islands. And presently, we actually have a project with APNIC Foundation. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Yuka Shori Katalka. So currently, I'm here today um, as a, a representative of AP Energy, Asia Pacific Next Generation, so to uh, train and develop a uh, young leader in AP Legion. So I've been working as a language uh, instructor and also educational practitioner. So currently, I graduated uh, Keio University uh, in, from Jun Rai Laboratory, and also um, the y I had a collaboration uh, with Wido Project and the Soy Asia in uh, Internet Project. So I'm really interested in this discussion uh, during this AP um, APNIC meeting. So yeah, nice to talk to you. So yeah, nice meeting you. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Elsa Odron from CBSnet Foundation, Philippines, together with my colleague, Glendel. I think she already mentioned about the foundation. Are oh, we introducing ourselves? Yes, yes. Just especially it's just for donors, if you are the recipient, but no, not the person alone. But say your name. I'm Heidi Lojals, and I work with the TOL project. Hello, everyone. My name is Zoe Tongbach-Hilmi. I work at Internews. Uh, we are both a funder and a recipient of funder in this space. I am on the platform accountabilities team, and this year we actually launched a very small grant pool that I'm overseeing called the Platform Impacts Fund, where we're funding micro-grants to independent researchers based in the majority world, uh, researching and collect mostly evidence-based collections um, on platform impacts within their communities. Uh, I'm especially interested in funding independent researchers or journalists or human rights defenders who are not affiliated with classic institutions who have difficulty accessing funding for this specific type of work. Uh, so please, if you're working in this area, I will be really happy to connect with you. I have to. <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, I'm uh, Nena Dorlic, I'm from Serbian Registry, and basically our registry supports different projects, mainly in the scope of uh, research and uh, market development in Serbia. Thank you very much. Do you have, sorry, can you start over there? And if you, I know we have a few more people on the back, and, and that will be the end of the initial introductions. So okay. If you can. Hi everyone, I am Carla and I am helping my friend Raimundo to tell about you what he works in the Amazon region. I am come from the Amazon region as well. Uh, let me see, Fred. <laughs> <laughs> but Raimundo is a, a quilombola person 
who comes from the Maranhão, that is a state located in Brazil region. And uh, he's coming from the ra radio and the TV Quilombo uh, organization about communication that comes from a popular demand in the Brazil who finds a guys who fights uh, with the digital rights and against the violations in the communities using the internet as a tool to face this challenge. And uh, me, I am Carla Braga. I am executive director from the Amazonia Youth Cooperation for Sustainable Development, that is the COJOVEN. And we work with education, research, and advocacy in the Amazon region. And uh, we developed this agenda, who is an agenda about public policies, projects, and programs to face the challenge about climate change in the Amazon region. And uh, we working up with uh, misinformation and uh, disinformation in the Amazon region because the deforestation and forest degradation are totally connected with this problem. And uh, right now we are empowering the youth to face this challenge and uh, we are trying to um, build a wave of a voice that comes from the Amazon territory to talk about our own realities and face the challenge. And we are here working, uh, looking for fundings and connections that can support us in this challenge. And thank you so much. Thank you. Um, I'm Rebecca Papillo. I'm from AUDA, the .au domain administration. So we run the .au in Australia. Um, through the AUDA Foundation, we run a community grants program. Uh, and so the, the objective is of the program is to deliver grants to community programs um, that promote in digital inclusion and digital innovation um, and drive benefits through the internet. Um, for uh, particular groups of people, including regional and remote Australians, um, Australians living with disabilities, and Australia's First Nations people. Um, we're also working on a broader grants program um, that we're hoping to launch next year with longer term partnerships. So yeah, interested to hear what everyone else is doing. Thank welcome. you. You're very new to your job, so welcome very uh, <laughs> Welcome oh, to I this am. community. <laughs> no, I'm, um, I'm a communications manager yeah. at Outer, so um, yeah, just, just here in a Brilliant. capacity Thank to you. learn and take it back. Thank you. Uh, af good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Christian Leon. I'm the secretariat of uh, Al Sur, that is a consortium of 11 organizations uh, working in digital rights in Latin America. And I'm also the executive director of uh, Internet Bolivia Foundation that works in data protection, uh, da uh, digital violences, and digital inclusion. Hi, my name is Al Smith. Um, I'm with the Tor Project. We build privacy and uh, anti-censorship tech. Oh, hi. Um, I'm Brett Solomon. I'm the executive director of Access Now. Hi, everyone. My name is Carolyn Tackett. I'm the director of campaigns and rapid response at Access Now. So Access Now is a, an organization focusing on defending and extending digital rights for people and communities at risk around the world. As part of that body of work, uh, we have the Access Now Grants Program, which over the last five years has been able to deliver about $8 million to 120 organizations working at the, the, gr the very grassroots level. I think a really important aspect of that is supporting organizations that are working in digital rights, but also at the intersection of other human rights issues, whether that be gender, LGBTQ, indigenous, environmental issues. Um, and that is a subgranting program. So our primary funder for that grants program is, is CETA, the Swedish Development Organization. But we're also open to conversations about other donors that are interested in, in talking about subgranting and have the opportunity to channel those resources to grassroots organizations. Um, so yeah, nice to meet you all, and we're happy to to talk more. Yeah. Good afternoon. My name is Chuck Brackett. Um, I work for a USAID program, so. I don't give money, and I can't take your money. But if you're interested in working with USAID and you're not sure how to get started, uh, my colleague and I can um, talk with you about that. So if there's anybody who doesn't know how to how to approach AID, so. 
Good afternoon, everyone. I'm George Washington, um, also with uh, Vistant. We're a private uh, US-based uh, firm uh, that has this contract with USAID uh, called Digital Apex. So looking forward to, to speaking with you all, and we can sort of explain how the mechanism uh, works. Thank you. Um, Catherine Townsend, I, um, wearing two hats, I work with the World Wide Web Foundation um, on human rights, um, preventing and countering online gender-based violence. Uh, joining the session today, representing Measurement Lab, which um, measures the speed and quality of the internet around the world and provides the largest open data set about that. Um, I think what's, uh, so we do provide grants for both those organizations. Um, uh, my question also for this group um, and for those who are supporting the development of the internet is uh, you know, the role that M Lab Measurement Lab provides is an independent assessment of how the internet is performing and makes that public. Um, how do we sustain that and how do we expand that more widely? Is that a service that a nonprofit chasing funds and chasing private donations from tech pl platforms should be pursuing? Um, or is that a role that a coalition of governments uh, should be setting up um, who actually gets to monitor the internet? Thank you. Hello everyone, I'm Pranav. I work with the Internet Society Foundation and I oversee the empowerment work. And uh, here we train youth ambassadors, early and mid-career professionals, and uh, many of them are also at this IGF, so you can also engage with them and hear more about our work and how we do it. And we also have our training and e-learning courses where um, multiple courses on aspects of tech in technical aspects of the internet and policy are available for free and you also uh, train them in person as well. So happy to engage with you, understand how we can collaborate and work together. Hi everybody, my name is Jerong. I look after the Asia Pacific region for this organization called ICANN. Uh, we, we are a platform that discusses domain name policy and uh, we do have a grant program which we just uh, launched and we're working on the implementation. So uh, more to come for that. Uh, as for the Asia Pacific region, we've, we fund some initiatives. Uh, most of them are related to domain name uh, related items like uh, uh, network operators groups, schools of internet governance. So we fund these initiatives. Um, as uh, a global organization, we actually also fund the IGF. Thank you. Thank you. Um, good afternoon. Pleased to meet you all. Didier Escaillé. Um, I also work for the Internet Society Foundation, and I have three of my colleagues in the room, so I think they've introduced um, what we do as an organization as well. My role is as Senior Director of Corporate Fundraising, so it's essentially going around outside of the Internet ecosystem in itself and kind of going after you know the healthcare industry and um, you know online travel agencies and going through you know the automotive industry I mean everyone basically relies on the internet nowadays yet we do have some risks that I'm sure we've identified in terms of splinter net in terms of fragmentation encryption and all of these issues so it's how do we rally um, you know people that are depending for their business, on the internet, um, gaming industry is another one of those, and how do we rally them to what we're defending? So, uh, Namaste everyone, I'm Ashirwad Tripathi from Educating Nepal. I'm the co-founder and president of that organization where we work on uh, building the, bridging the socioeconomic and digital divide. Besides that, I also chair Internet Society's special interest group on Internet for Education, and I'm vice chair of APRIGF, which is very much supported by APNIC and APNIC Foundation. So thank you, Paul, Sylvia, Eliza, well everybody for that. Back to you. Thank you very much, everyone, for doing such a quick round of introductions. Um, I think that, um, you know, but I, I, I guess I'm not alone in identifying that there are many areas in which our work um, overlaps uh, and that, you know, for organizations like in our case that we are uh, intermediaries, we fundraise and we give funding. Um, many of us call it different ways, but in the end, these mechanisms to support community and strengthen um, infrastructure um, and policy development and other areas of collaboration um, related to, to the development of the internet. 
some with very new programs like ICANN coming up, hopefully soon. Hopefully soon, I have to reinforce that. You're wrong, I'm looking at you. So, <laughs> so, so you know, th those um, big programs that the community are, are expecting. So the next uh, few minutes of this session, our original idea was to break into small groups and try to, and probably three or two, just because the room doesn't allow us to move that freely, um, and have a, um, discuss what are the biggest challenges that your organizations have. Um, we are trying, the, the great team of the APNA Foundation is here, and if you guys can raise your hands so people can identify you. We are collecting uh, the information of those of you here in the room, and we will try to take notes of those breakout rooms to um, see what are the options and the opportunities for us to look at potential solutions for collaboration. We keep talking about we should collaborate and we should do this and we should do that, but it seems that we don't operationalize those, those uh, ideas. So this is the first um, attempt of trying to identify those. And maybe some of those are easy to do, like, I don't know, what grants program and software you use and what is the format of your reporting tool. Uh, and others can be a little bit more complex. So um, I will um, break the group into three, two, into three. Um, and Dave, Elisha, Dave and Elisha, and Marcos will facilitate the groups and take notes. And we have another group for the remote participation, but I believe it's only one person. Two people from remote participation, so Kathleen will take care of the remote participation. And after this, the idea is that we will share our notes with you, um, organize a, a, a database of what we found out, also uh, with consent of those that have agreed to share emails with the rest, so don't worry, <laughs> no blast uh, spam going anywhere. And um, we will try to collect some additional information about your organizations and provide some additional details uh, moving forward. So we will break, it's just for a 15 minutes uh, conversation and we will reconvene before the end of the hour. And I hope just you don't run away and go to the next session just yet, just to stay for these short conversations and we'll see how it goes. Okay, thank you very much. So one, one group in this side and one group on this side, which is easier to, to move. Yeah.
we feel we need to build other tools to measure those things, and we need to build tools that will display that data easily. We need to build tools that will allow us to digest that information and make it accessible. So that's one of actually one of our strongest kind of challenges is measuring the impact of the core network, like in the meaningful way that we've updated and the pipelines are sustainable from a programming perspective um, because that our donors really want that information and we want to provide it to them but we haven't been able to find the donor that wants to help us build the pipeline that gets in between um, and I really don't know what the answer to that question is and I've been in core for five years doing fundraising and I still never been able to really figure out <laughs> how to answer and I also know that measuring impact and writing reports is a burden on a lot of organizations, especially the small ones. I'm lucky that I get to partner with a grants manager and a project manager who write our reports, but not every organization has that. Can we, can we yes, exactly. <laughs> like, I know, you know, I just know that that's a burden, but I understand the reasoning. Sometimes they just want the things that are at the local level, and it's not basic for, for them, so they can do it. But most of the of the grants, no, for, for the big organizations are uh, well, are, are, are stuck in bringing that to some organizations that have big projects. No? So that's a, that's that's, a, that's sometimes it's a challenge. No? And it's, so we have like we do some soft ranking. Like,
Thank you, everyone. Um, we ran out of time, and they are going to kick us <laughs> out of the room. So we promise to take the notes and bring them to you. But thank you very much for attending.